I think research involves a lot of curiosity. Post questions, collect data, and try to answer these questions. China is very keen on protecting elephants. Again, I hope our work contributes to improve this human elephant coexistence. Last speaker is uh, Professor uh, Hemsa. He is from Xishuang Banna Tropical Botanical Garden. Welcome, Professor Hemsa. First, thank you very much for having me here. And China has become, like in all disciplines of science, a very important, it's a power, powerhouse in, in conservation science. So a couple of years ago, we decided to, to launch a new academic journal integrative conservation and this is a new China-based global conservation journal published by Shishon Bana Tropical Botanical Garden. My name is Ahimsa Campos Arceiz, I'm from Spain and I'm a professor and a principal investigator here at the Shishon Bana Tropical Botanical Garden. I study wildlife ecology and conservation, and we do two main things. One is we try to study the ecological function, so then how these animals affect ecosystems. And the other area of research is human-wildlife conflicts. Living next to animals like elephants or tigers or leopards, how we can reduce that impact. So this is science. Science is a bit like an onion, right? So you have many thin layers, and then science just keep on growing layer after layer. I think my group and I, we, we are doing a decent job. We, we work hard and we, we work on interesting things. We are not changing the world, but I think we are part of progress. I have been in China uh, about two years. I came here in March 2020. Yeah, there were many things that, that made me feel coming here. And for my work, I think we are maybe 10, 15 years ahead of what will happen in other parts of Southeast Asia. They are, they, are, they are going somewhere for some reason, right? They are tracking resources. Okay, the animal knows. Okay, winter is coming, let me go to the hot place. But the dry season is coming, let me go to the, to the wet area, right? Why it chose to come here, and here, and here? So here you can see there's a very clear directionality, right? It's a straight, straight movement, so seems the elephant is broken. I'm very impressed with the, the quality of Chinese students. What I, what I found when I moved to China is that it's, it's a huge quality of, of uh, researchers, particularly young people, you know, they are really, really outstanding. And you know the, the education is, is excellent. Their attitude is very very committed. You know people work very hard, and I'm I'm looking forward to see them doing like really fantastic work and then having very good impacts. Good morning, guys. Morning. Yeah, so as we will discuss these days, so whenever you live with elephants near your home, that's a big thing because they have the potential to have very big impact on your life, yes. sometimes very negative, you know? So then uh, much of our work is about understanding that kind of interaction with people, but also we don't want to focus only on the negative interactions. That's why we also want to understand the benefits that uh, these big animals bring to ecosystems. I group Asian elephant. They continue to trot. It has finally arrived at its original habitat.
I began to follow this story in, I think, around October 2020, and I was surprised all the time because we knew when the elephants had left Mongyang, Sichuanbana, that was outside of their recent range, and it was surprising how elephants were getting farther and farther and farther. And then since then we just keep on asking once a while, so where are the elephants now? So we have been doing a lot of work on understanding, understanding the, the drivers of uh, elephant behavior, why they go, where they go, why they eat, what they eat. We put some tracks in front of the bridge that comes to our home, to, in case that they came, so we were trying to make sure they couldn't come, because also if they cross that bridge, it would be like very dangerous for, for, for everyone. There was one night that I think it was two or three elephants came from there, they actually entered this, this uh, crop area and they did very small damage, no, nothing very serious. They also damaged some of these glass houses. Okay, so this is the guy, yeah. I'm taking the limelight from you. I'm talking about your crops like oh, our rice and... <laughs> I'm talking, oh, this is our breeding center. I'm taking all the credit for your work. <laughs> so, so this is, this is Professor Chupon's, uh, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> Rambo 这么近看过大象吗？哪一位？从来没有。身上腺素飙升，腰杆一下就涨起来了。We got close to elephants in this case, but our job was mainly to separate people from elephants. One of my concerns was what is what if these elephants kill some people? So luckily that didn't happen, but. But you want to get people engaged and, and you want people to care about these things. I think it was unprecedented. I think never before in any country there was such an effort to respond to 17 animals. I think never, never before had happened the amount of economic cost, the, the amount of people mobilized, the amount of resources utilized. Well, China does it in a bit different way than other parts of Asia. And the main concern is to get, is, is to focus on people's safety. And that is done mainly through monitoring the elephants and telling people where the elephants are. So trying, trying to prevent elephants and people getting close to each other. So it's, it's mainly a matter of, of uh, people's safety. In other countries, it's more an economic issue. And there's more focus on protecting the crops. But I think here it's, it's, it's more, more, more personal. And then, of course, there is a lot of people who are in the field collecting this data, particularly in, in China, there are many people working on monitoring. And this produces really good data because it allows us to, to monitor the movement of the elephant. And from this data, this kind of data we're analyzing these days. And then this data gives us very good understanding of where elephants go and why they go, where they go, and then how this relates to from the ecological impact to the interactions with people. In the case of China, China is developing very sophisticated monitoring and early warning systems, more than other countries. I think we will be able to export this model to other places. Well, the main difference that I can tell between the work we have been doing in Malaysia and the one we're doing in China, and the kind of data that, that can be generated is, China is, is much more developed in terms of technology. And then uh, the quality of monitoring here is much, much higher. And I think that in, in a few years, in, in five to 10 years, it's gonna be completely different to what we were doing before in terms of scale and quality. So then we have lost a lot of, lot of uh, elephant populations in the last 100 years. They will not survive in the next 100, 150 years unless we decide that we want to protect them.
for China, the, the specifics of my work about elephants, I think is very important because China is very keen on protecting elephants. And it's doing it well, so and, you know, the elephant population is growing. It has doubled in the past 25 years or so. So we need to learn how to cope with this success. But how do we handle the, the negative consequences of this, of this growth? Again, I hope our, our work contributes to improve this human elephant coexistence. This is great. I mean, I'm very pleased to live in Sichuan Banana. It's, it's, a, it's one of the best places that I know. It's full of beautiful nature, you know. You can see the view from my office. I'm privileged. Every day, particularly in the late afternoon, I'm working, looking at a layer of green trees with a blue sky on the top. That's what humans want, okay? That, that makes... Any, any human will enjoy that. It is warm, and it's warm. I love warm weather, but also it's socially warm. People are very warm here. I remember when I began coming to, to China, I thought Chinese would be a bit socially cold and distant, but it's not. People here are very warm, engaged, happy. And that, that's something that I didn't expect at the very beginning. And, and so it's a lovely place. I think. I'm very, very grateful for, for being here. I think research involves a lot of curiosity, right? And it's such a powerful drive. We, we work hard and we, we work on interesting things, pose questions, collect data, and try to answer these questions. Because what we do is very applied science. So we're trying to do research to deal with problems. I expect to be here less eight to 10 years. I think that's the time that I can get done the basic things that I'm, that I'm trying to do. Yunnan is very diverse, so then I think one of the main advantages is that it does have a lot of biodiversity that can be protected. So I think Yunnan has half of the plants and half of the animals of China, so that, that is really remarkable. So I think in the case of China, it's, it's, it's a bit particular because it's such a, there's so many people in this country, you know, it's such a big country, but it's, it's a big country in, in area, but also in population. And now it's a very rich country. And I really like what I was seeing here. I saw a very optimistic society. I think China has been growing for the last 40 years. I saw you know, huge growth in all dimensions, economic, but also in terms of science and technology. And so all these things, if they are put for conservation, they can be very useful. So I think that that's a very positive thing.